actual font size as well. And then also you can have font weight, which is like bold or normal. Um, text decoration. So you guys, if you have ever done uh, web design before, you know that in links, they're usually always underlined by default. So that's what it is. You can make other elements underlined or you can take the underlines away from um, links if you don't want your um, links to be underlined. And also background color. Uh, same thing with the, col uh, with the hex colors, uh, color codes. But you can also provide like white. I think it has a few default ones, like white, red, blue all work. I don't know any beyond that, maybe like magenta. But if you want a really specific color, you should use the color codes. So Text decoration applies to how the links are going to look? Oh, no, it applies to the specific element. So, okay. for example, if I had a span and I say text decoration oh, equals this, like okay. none or something or underlined, then everything would be underlined. Okay, so it's yeah. But if you have a selector and if you're selecting a particular link okay. and you say text de decoration equals none, then that link will um, have like no yeah. underlining. Okay. So, it's whatever these um, CSS uh, properties apply to whatever selector you're using. Yeah. So, like, could a selector be like headings? Uh, yeah, I'll go over some. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, you're kind of jumping right into this. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, selectors. <laughs> so um, now that you know all these cool CSS rules, you need a way to actually label HTML elements so your rules know which elements to actually apply the styles to. Um, so we're going to teach you three different kinds of. Um, yeah, so I'll be. So you kind of tag. I guess nice like graphics there, wasn't it? You kind of tag an element with um, either ID or class, or use the element tag as we'll show you later. And then in your CSS, you can just, just directly re reference that and then apply styles. So the most basic kind of selector is an element selector. And then this is basically just selecting the element type by their, or the HTML elements by their element type. So by element type, I mean like image, A for links, um, div, paragraph, heading, like you said, you can use like H1 and whatever. Um, so if you said image equals this styling stuff, it'll correspond to, like, it'll get this um, element and apply the styling to it. And similarly, for paragraphs, it'll yeah, go to this paragraph. Or any other paragraphs on the page. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why is the syntax set up so that you have, like, a left bracket and then you go to the next line and then the right bracket's on the other line? Why aren't they all in one thing? Just go to the browser. Okay, so I guess it's for readability's sake. Like, if you had, like, a massive list of like 100 things, you wouldn't want them all going like horizontal because then you have to like scroll, right? So I guess it's kind of like a readability thing. Um, you can have them stacked like vertically, and then just have an opening brace in there. You can alternatively, it doesn't really matter what these braces are. You can have this here, or and this here, or like this one on this line, just so they're em like, enveloping the body. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So if you want to do three different things to images, but you have to add like tags to the image or something like that, or? If you wanted to what? Let's say you want to do three different things with three different types of images. So you don't um, want like all the images to do the same thing. Okay. So does that mean you have to do what we said on the previous slide? Yeah, I'll go over the ID and class and stuff. Oh, okay. It's in the next slide. You guys are way ahead of this. What? Uh, this is actually on the next slide, sorry. So this is supposed to be on this slide. It's just like because PowerPoint like, cut, off, cut off the text area here. So, yeah. It wouldn't work if you broke it up in, into two lines in CSS, right? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but they should be on the same line. Um, some things, I think there are some elements, like, uh, I won't get into it, but there are some things for um, back, like background. You can There's like shortcuts, where instead of doing background image, background color, whatever, you can do background and then put all of the different values in it. And then for those things, you can have them on different lines. But that's kind of like more advanced, so I think we'll cover it in um, other questions. Okay. More questions? This is all, you guys are all experts. You won't ask for help on your lab. <laughs> no? Okay. Okay, so uh, just what you question that you had earlier. So what if I want to apply styles to like different types of things? I don't want to apply the same style to every single image, but I want to kind of differentiate them. So you can add things, um, you can add class and ID selectors. So ID is exactly what it sounds like, kind of like an ID and a tag. So it should be unique. Um, it's used to identify one particular HTML element. Um, not, like I said, it has to be unique. Uh, it's actually invalid XHTML if you have more than one element with the same ID. So it won't validate. Good question? Everyone's kind of like sitting like this. <laughs> um, on, huh? What is XHTML? Oh, sorry. So XHTML is kind of like HTML, but more strict. So just like stricter rules for what HTML should be. 
Um, is a class made up of individual IDs? Uh, no. So if you want to, yeah, alternatively, that, um, if you want to identify one or more HTML elements, um, you can use a class. So this is used to give multiple elements the same kind of style. Oh, question? Well, what's XML? Oh, he just asked a question. Is uh, what is XML, XHTML? XHTML is a combination of um, HTML and XML. It's like a stricter version of HTML that uses XML syntax. It's kind of like a mouthful. Just know that it's stricter. So there's more rules and there's more like, uh, they're like a lot stricter if you don't have like ending tags and then it won't validate and then it won't be mad at anything. Okay, um, do you guys have more questions about the class? So you use ID when you want to um, target one specific element and you use class if you have a bunch of like, for example, I have a bunch of like menu items, I can, all t I can tag them with class menu item and then every single menu item will have the same style. Yeah. Like if you want, oh, question. So how do you tag them? Um, you tag them just by doing attributes. So for example, we don't we went over attributes in the last lecture, right? For HTML. Okay, so um, inside the actual element, you can have different attributes, and you just say like, class equals whatever you want your class name to be, and um, quotes, and similarly for it. Question over here. Um, yes. So in the previous slide, you have the P for like that, just that general P. Yeah. And what will that do if you have other P's that have IDs and classes and stuff? What will which one do? Like, so you have other paragraphs that have ID tags or class tags. Yeah. But then, what if you still have this P, this P uh, CSS element? What will that do to like? So you're asking a question about like which one will take priority over? Yeah. Okay, that's at the end of the lecture. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop asking questions. Yeah. A slide from before, when you first introduced CSS, um, you had, oh, even before this, this one. Okay. Um, so the block objects, mm -hmm. the the only CSS tag, or uh, only things that apply to block objects are margin padding, background, and etc. Um, you can actually use all of these things. This is just kind of to, to differentiate. So it's important to know what type of elements you're applying what um, property to, because some things just don't make sense. Like if you have a link, it's not, um, it's like, it's not reasonable to, or like, it doesn't make sense to apply like text align to it, right? So these are just some things that can go under blocks, but also blocks can have all of these things. Yeah, sorry if that wasn't clear. <laughs> Okay, so you can um, yeah, so you can tag um, HTML elements by giving them an ID or a class, and the way that you reference them in the actual CSS code is for every ID you use this little pound sign. So, for example, if you wanted to get the element with um, ID description, you use you would say pound sign description, and then to get any classes class names, you use dot and then the class name. So, for example, I want to get this paragraph whose class name is extra info, so I say dot extra info. Make sense? Sorry. Okay, we also have something that's called a universal selector, and the universal universal selector is really special. Um, it selects all of the HTML elements on the page. So if you say use this little star, and then you apply, you have all these CSS rules. It'll actually apply these CSS rules to every single element. Hence, universal. Okay, so we've seen what you can do with single selectors. But what if you want to combine selectors to make more kind of complex um, selections? So you can do something called descendant, which means like um, if it's like nested. So for example, um, this paragraph class has a, has two things in it, right? So um, these are these two elements are descendants of the paragraph class or this parallel element. Does that make sense? With what descendant means? So it's kind of like what descendant means in like the regular connotation, like. Um, so these are like the children of this like parent kind of like enveloping element. So these are descendants. So if you want to select um, by nested uh, by nested structure, for example, you want to find any span inside a paragraph tag, like I say here, you would include you do a space. So p space span, and that would select this. Yeah. But you guys think this next one will do. So what does this mean? What is it trying to select? Yeah, anything with the class description, right? And it's looking for any 
So it's looking for any links inside any element with a uh, class description. So it'll find this link. And it does. Okay. So you can also combine selectors. Um, so you can select between elements of the same um, class. So for example, I want to find um, any, so I want to find an element that is a paragraph element, but it's also a class info. So you can say p.info, and it finds this, because this is a paragraph with class info. And similarly, a.info would find what? It finds this, right? Okay, so it would find a, any link um, element with a class info. And you can do this for um, uh, IDs too. You would just use the pound thing instead of the dots. So p pound info would find a paragraph with ID info. I feel like I'm repeating the same words over and over. Like, are there any questions? Yeah. It would do both of them. This, yeah. That selects anything that fits oh, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question about the previous slide? Under spaces? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear it. No, it's okay. Um, for the block family, you listed out more. Are those just the options you have, or are those all applicable to this entire machine? Uh, okay, so when you have a font family and you have a list of things, it'll what it does is like this is the ordering, and these are like the backups. So if your computer, if the browser can okay. find Ver Vergana on it, it'll use that. But if it can't, it'll go here and then it'll go here. Too. Okay. So those are kind of like backups. It's not like randomly picked out of these yeah. ones. Uh, span tag is actually, we covered this last week in the HTML lecture, so you have two kind of like wrapper elements, I guess. You have span and div, and for span you can like wrap any kind of text, and it's an inline element. So everything, if you have a bunch of spans together, they'll be right next to each other horizontally. Whereas if you have div, it kind of stands for division, so, um, and they're block elements, so okay. they'll, they'll stack vertically. Okay. Okay. All good. Okay, so the last kind of, well not the last kind of, but the last kind of that we're going to teach you, um, selector combination thing is grouped, which applies a style to like everything on the list. So basically when you, what you say when you say um, A comma P comma span, and then you're doing red, is um, you're telling the browser to put, uh, make all of these elements red. So it's like, do it for all of these. So in this example, what would happen to these, these three things? They're all, all red, right? So it's kind of like a list. All right. All right. Okay. Everyone see that and understand selectors? Okay. okay. So this is what your question was earlier. I forgot your name. Jeff. Jeff. Okay. So specific. Okay. I never pronounced this word. Specificity, um, which means like consider you have this example. So you had a paragraph with the class para and an ID my para and it has some text in it. And then you have these three rules in a CSS document. So you say, for every paragraph, make it red. For everything of class, para, make it blue. And for everything with ID, my para, make it green. So what do you think will actually happen to this text? What color will it be? Heard the answers on this. Green, okay. Why do you think that is? the word specificity kind of like entails, it's um, putting priority over things that are like more specific. So an ID is more specific than a class, which is more specific than an element. So you're, it takes um, the ID first. Does that make sense? So anything that has, any, if you have an ID like styling, that beats anything that's a class, and anything with class styling beats anything that's an element. Okay, so after we've, we've written all of our nice CSS rules, we need a way to actually link them to our HTML element or else nothing really happens. Um, so we're going to teach you three ways of doing this. Um, the first way is external style sheets, and then you have inline style sheets, or inline styling and embedded style sheets. So the first one is external style sheets, and this is actually the most common way to um, link CSS to HTML. Um, this is when the CSS and HTML are actually in separate files, and then you link it like this. Link it like this. Okay. Um, inside your head um, tags, you have this link, href, style, or wherever your style um, URL is, and then you tell the browser